fits your needs. And all we ask in return is that you tell them where you heard about it. It's simple. For more info, just call Tom Spix, 352-804-1223, and pick up your copy of the Downtown Ocala newspaper today. Now read Ocala Downtown Newspaper Online. Ocala's Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Ocala! I have a uh, a crystal ball, Robin. I have a crystal ball right here, and I'm going to look into the future of somebody out there. Hold on. Let me find somebody. Okay. okay. I, I found somebody 26 years old. 26 years old. I don't know your name, uh, but 26 years old. Okay. I'm going to look into your future when you're 55 years old. Oh, my gosh. You... Oh, what are you doing? Oh, my. Look at the debt you found. Yes. Oh, my gosh. The, here's the good news. Here's the good news. That future doesn't have to be your future, right? There mm-hmm. could be a better future for you. If you are that age, you've got to pay attention to the next book because the next author, I should say, has written a book called Get a Financial Life. And the information in here, trust me, I'm 62. I know. I wish I had read this when I was 26 or whatever age I just told mm-hmm. that my fictitious person was. No, seriously. Um there were so many things that I did wrong that, that I just didn't know. Uh, Beth Kobliner is one of the nation's leading authorities on personal finance for young people and young adults. She's a commentator, journalist, contributed to the New York Times, Oprah Magazine, the Huffington Post, even Sesame Street. Uh, it's awesome. She's I been, love that. She's been on the Today Show, Good Morning America, NPR's Good, uh, I'm sorry, Morning Edition. Um, so it's such an honor to have her on our little show. But more importantly, the information she's going to give to that person out there that I just pretended I was looking at a, um, uh, what do you call it, a crystal ball through to about. Get a financial life, personal finance in your 20s and 30s. Beth Kobliner, how many old people? Good morning, Beth. How are you, first of all? I'm great. Thank you. I love that crystal ball idea. I mean, that is so true that people say to me, I mean, I meet some people in their early 60s who said, you know, when your book came out, I read it. And originally 20 years ago, 20 plus years ago, and I put a little extra money in my 401k and now I'm in my 60s and I have a lot. And I'm so happy to hear that. And I also think, wow, am I 112 years old? But it, it <laughs> really is. <laughs> it's a g- good feeling for a few minutes. But now this new book um, I've rewritten, uh, revised for millennials, those people, that next generation who are now in their 20s and have lived through the Great Recession and have seen their student loans skyrocket and talking to them about what the steps they can take to really get out of debt and start to save and invest um, the way previous generations have. But it's tough. It's tough for kids out there. I, I love what you've just said. And, and the book, I, just for the listeners, I, you have things in here that you couldn't have written 20 years ago because the world has changed. Not just technological, so different. but social. Right. So the social landscape has changed, right? Right, right. I mean, 20 years ago, you you would say, okay, well, there's something called health insurance, and you should, you should have it, and I know you don't want it, and nobody had health insurance in their 20s. I mean, it was just something that it wasn't a possibility. And now, of course, we know people have to have it because, sadly, we know people who are in their 20s or their 30s who not only were bankrupted by medical bills, but then their parents and their loved ones were bankrupted by medical bills. So things like that, or buying a home, it used to be no money down, and that was great in the 90s. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, it was a bad idea. Banks were lending to people who didn't have money, and now you need 20% down. So there's such a changed uh, financial landscape out there, but there are things that young people can do that really aren't that difficult because we have technology. You can sign up for things automatically, which can really help. Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the one thing that hasn't changed is the allure of a credit card like in the beginning of your college years. That, that whole t- uh, temptation, uh, which leads to, of course, this huge bill of debt that, that on top of you, your education bills, uh, is it, just right. o- overwhelming, right? 
Well, actually, I have to tell you, you're wrong on that one, Larry. Oh, good. I'm, I'm glad I'm wrong. <laughs> because, yeah, it is in that young people today are much more cautious and don't get into credit card debt um, in their 20s nearly at the level that people did um, in at, for Gen Xers, my generation, or baby boomers, because um, they first off have a lot of student loan debt, and it makes them nervous. And also, the Credit Card Act passed under President Obama said you need to be 21 in order to get a credit card, or you need to have a job to get a credit card. And a lot of young people today, you know, don't graduate with a credit card, whereas pretty much everyone I knew got a credit card just for signing their name. I know one woman who got a credit card walking into a frat party. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was a different era. Credit cards are being handed out like candy to babies. Right. And now right. it's much more difficult oh, for, see, in a good way. So that's good news. See, another, uh, so many changes. Now, now, what is the part of the, uh, the latest financial tips for same-sex couples um, is, is part of the book? Again, something yeah. you wouldn't have written 20 years ago, but what, right. why is it different in their circumstance than it would have been 20 years ago? Did something change in the law? Well, actually, it is more just the awareness that when we're, you know, basically when you're talking about these issues now, it relates as a married couple. If, you know, a, a couple is, there are more reasons for them to get married for a variety of different financial benefits. Even the idea of, um, you know, having a joint account or who uh, gets the money upon someone's death. So there are, you know, some specifics. And just even, frankly, as a writer, when I write this, not assuming it's a, a husband and a wife, but, it, you know, it, there's more of a range of possibilities in that and acknowledging that. Okay. Can, can, I, can I just get, add one thing to that? Because it, sure. might, it might not be the relationship that we all think it is. Maybe it's just two guys mm-hmm. that it's more convenient to live together. Maybe they're not homosexual. They just like they're the odd couple. But they but they yeah, want but they want to com- they want to combine their their finances. Is that possible? I think that would be really unusual for someone to go to those lengths to kind of, I mean, the, the benefits of, you know, whether it's the marriage tax, that's a negative, so maybe people, you know, want to file separately, uh, but I think that I, I think that was something people talked about at first, but I think we're way, way, way past that in that, you know, people get married because they, they love each other and want to get married, and if there are some financial benefits and some financial disadvantages, they deal with it. When you're looking for a financial institution to save your money at or to get a loan from, do you prefer credit unions over banks? Yeah. I mean, I actually love credit unions. I just spoke at a credit union in Maine, and um, I loved it because they're um, institutions that are um, cooperatively owned, meaning that everyone owns a share in it, and it's not-for-profit, and they tend to have higher rates on their savings and lower rates on their um, uh, loans that they charge people, like, you know, credit cards or home loans or car loans. And so I really, really like credit unions. Um, So seeing if you're able to qualify one, the one thing is you want to make sure it has the right it has technology. You know, if you're used to making, you know, withdrawals, ATM withdrawals, or banking online, you want to make sure. But most of them now are pretty much up to speed on that. The book is called Get a Financial Life, Personal Finance in Your 20s and 30s. And uh, it doesn't really mean you have to be that age because I think I'm benefiting from it too. <laughs> uh, mm. Beth, Beth Koblander is the author of the book. And so this is a rewrite of the earlier book. Is that right? Yes. So 20 years ago, I pitched the idea of a book for people in their 20s and 30s when I was in my 20s, and um, I was working for Money Magazine, and it was sold, although at the time they said, oh, young people don't care about money, they're having too much fun. And I think nobody would say that today, um, but I, uh, in, on its 20th anniversary, I decided it was time to uh, redo it to speak to, again, some of these issues like student loan debt, an average student loan debt, um, and how do you repay it, or how to save up for a down payment when you really need 20%, yeah. um, and also just dealing with, like, the swipe economy, you know, 
this is a first generation. They've never used cash much. They, you know, use cards and now, you know, even debit cards. And now they uh, use Venmo and Apple Pay and all these ways to pay using their phone. So how how does that affect them? How are they um, aware of spending money, Um, but also using apps and digital tools to make it easier than ever to get, whether it's to save money or to even get a bargain. There's some great, like, um, I was interviewed by a company, Retail Me Not, which is a search engine for online coupons, or something called Honey is a browser extension that automatically applies you know, store codes when you're shopping online. So there are all these different cool ways to save money and to and to spend money, but do it smarter wow. um, and invest money. All right. If you have that crystal ball and you're looking into your future and you see, uh-oh, you better get this book and make sure that uh-oh doesn't happen. Get a financial life, personal finance in your 20s and 30s. Beth Koblander, uh, go, go to the bookstore and get the book. And your website is your name, right? BethKoblander.com? That's exactly right. Okay. Thank you so much, Beth. That was awesome. Great. We'll Thank be you. Right back. Thank you so much. From the Paddock Mall Studios, this is WOCA, Ocala, Gainesville, The Villages, 1370 AM, 963 FM, The Source. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. A showdown on Capitol Hill over the president's Supreme Court pick as the Senate begins debate. Even though Democrats plan to filibuster, Republican Judiciary Committee. 